one of the questions that we received from our viewer is the one that was sent to us by Litabo. Let's go and see Litabo. Litabo sent us a very beautiful question, guys. Let's check what uh, Litabo wanted us to look at. Litabo is from Museki High School. A big, big shout out to you, boy boy. Thank you very much for sending us uh, a question. The question that he sent is the one that you're currently looking at now. It is basically uh, where he's asking is like playing with us, guys. Please assist me to understand how do I prove the proportionality theorem? If you look there, the proportionality theorem looks very messy. It's got a lot of lines going through around a triangle. There's a lot of things that are happening there. So you look at it in a textbook and you don't understand what is happening. And that is where Tenfold Life comes in. Very, very important for you to understand what is going on. By the way, if you also want access to videos that will help you to understand the basics that you encounter in textbooks or in class, you can download our app. The app is called Tenfold Education. If you download this app, it will give you access to the theory behind the practice that you work on. Our show is about practical stuff. You send questions to us, we help you to understand how to work with those questions. But then if you also want you to cover some basics, some theory from grade 10, 11, and 12, you can download our app. It's called Tenfold Education. Right. Now, if you've been like Litab and you're struggling with proving the proportionality theorem, maybe you've seen it in class when a lot of teachers do it. It becomes very complicated when you're seeing it the first time. And you want to understand what do you really do with this thing? What is going on with all these lines? How do I really work with this particular thing? Well, this is actually how everything is going to work out. I want you to see what we need to do if you want to prove this theorem. I asked us to start with a blank page where we have no drawings so that you can see all those lines that are crisscrossing each other. Where do they really come from? Right. So first of all, the theorem is asking us to do something very important. The statement of the theorem reads as follows. Very important. It says, um, a line, if you draw a line, right, parallel, right, one side of triangle, one side of a triangle will be special in a sense that it will divide the other two sides, divide the other two sides into equal proportions. This is actually the statement that we have in this uh, uh, theorem the time. Well, this looks like a lot of words that we wrote here, but it's not complicated at all. It's very important because what we are looking at as far as that statement is concerned is that if you have a triangle, in short, it means that if you have a triangle like the one that I have here, right, and I draw, let's call this triangle ABC, right? We call this triangle ABC. So the theorem says if I could succeed to draw a line, right, from one side of the triangle to the other, such that that line is parallel to one of the sides of the triangle, in this case, such that it's parallel to BC, and we may name our line, line DE, right? That line will divide the first side, which means the side on the left-hand side, this side here. It will divide that side and the other side and the other side into equal proportions, which simply means, in simple terms, the length of AD divided by the length of DB will be the same as the length of AE divided by the length of EC, right? So that's essentially what the whole thing is about, right? If you've got a triangle, you draw a line parallel one side of a triangle, right? It's going to divide the sides into two equal proportions. The ratio on one side will be equal to the ratio on the other side. It's just as easy as that. I know what is confusing to you is when you start looking at the proof, there's a lot of lines that are going on there, crisscrossing each other. You, you don't just lo lose uh, uh, whatever is going on. You lose the logic behind what is happening there. So I will help you to understand what is going on. This is tenfold life. We're going to make sure we simplify it for you. So check this out, right? So we're going to start our argument by saying, right, we need that triangle, of course, because we need to prove that indeed if you've got that kind of, kind of a triangle, we will have what we're looking at. Okay, cool. So let's look at this triangle. So we've got this triangle here that we have. It's a very big, nice triangle. And in this triangle, we've got what we are uh, talking about, which is a line that is going to be parallel one side of a triangle. This is A, this one is B, and this is C. We've got the line D and E, and we are told that DE is parallel to BC. So what are we required to prove? We are required, right, to prove that... If you take AD and you divide it by DB, you'll get the same length as when you take AE divided by EC. Very important for you to keep that in mind. Now, 
um, in order for us to be able to do this, there's a couple of things that we need to agree on first before we even come and talk about this diagram, right? So I need you to understand that there's a, about three things which are important ingredients that will help you to follow what is going on as we try to prove this. The biggest mistake we can do is jump right into it and start already explaining to you what you need to do in order to find the solution in terms of trying to prove this. So there's three things that I want you to see and understand before we can come to this, right? So let's look at those tools that will help us to understand what is going on. So the first tool, this is the first tool that I want to share with you that will help you to understand what is going on. Normally, when you're proving, you don't discuss these tools, but you need them in order to understand what is going on. When you're proving, you don't show this, they are encoded in the proof, but I want you to see them. First of all, the first one I want you to pay attention is if I have a triangle like this, we all know that the area of any triangle is always half base multiplied by height. Now, the first thing I want you to understand is that if you've got a triangle, right, and you may decide to name your triangle, triangle ABC, the base can be anywhere you want. You can put it anywhere you want. And I'm going to do this three times so that you'll see that we can change the base. But when we do so, what exactly happens to the height of your triangle of interest? So I'm, I'm looking here at different triangles, ABC, all of them. Uh, all triangle ABCs and we want to see something very interesting about the change of the base if you're dealing with this. Now if I decide to say I want the base, the bottom part which is BC to be the base of my triangle, I hope you guys will see that if that becomes the base of my triangle, the height has to be perpendicular to the base so it must start at point A which means it's going to be like this way. So this is going to be the height of the triangle that I'm looking at. And in this context, the area of that particular triangle that I'm looking at now will just simply be area, right? Area of triangle uh, ABC will simply become half the base, which is BC, half base multiplied by height. And that is the first one I wanted you to pay attention to. Please keep that in mind. Now, this is not the only way you can decide to work the area of this triangle. Maybe I might want my base to be the other side. What if I wanted my base to be on that side, right? If, um, if I did this, if I did this, what would happen? If I put um, my, my base there, right? If I did my base there, the height will have to be like this. This is how the height is, is simply going to look. So which means now in that case, the area of the triangle will just be again half. The base this time will be AC, right? AC multiplied by the height, which in this case we can also call H, which is going to be our height there, right? Just like here, the height was H. Again, on the last one, I can change and say, I want my base to be here. I don't know if you guys can see this. The base is going to be the other side. If that is the base, then the height is going to have to start at C, or the opposite vertex. And this is simply going to be the height in this case. And when I do the area of that particular triangle, the third one, what will happen with this one? Area is going to be half times the base. The base is now changing to AB multiplied by the height, which is going to be H. Very important for you to keep that in mind. Now, the other piece of information that you need in order to understand this theorem that we have to prove here, the second tool now, tool number two. I hope this is making sense to you, Litabo. Tool number two says the following. If you have a line, right, and you have another line, and these lines are parallel to each other, right? When you draw two triangles that are subtended on the same base, you can call this base AB. If I have base AB there, right, I can construct a yellow triangle, putting it there, and we can call this triangle ABP. If I have this triangle ABP, and I draw another triangle, which is the green triangle now, which I can call um, triangle ABQ this time, since the heights are the same, you'll see that they've got the same height, and even the yellow triangle has got the same height as the green triangle because of the fact that these are triangles drawn between parallel lines. They have the same base and they have the same height. So the important thing you need to keep in mind is when you have parallel lines, the distance between those parallel lines is always the same. Now, when you draw two triangles that are having the same base, drawn between parallel lines, they have to have the same area because the base is the same and their height is also the same. So the reason we use here is that same base, same height, because between parallel lines, the distance is always the same. 
So the height of those triangles will always also be the same. And then we say, if you draw two triangles between parallel lines that have the same base, they're going to be equal in area. Please keep that in mind. Right. Now, we're going to continue now and say, okay, after this, we know that the area of the yellow triangle is just simply equal to the area of the green triangle. Same base, same height. That's the second tool. Now, with these tools, we are ready to start working out maybe the last tool, which we'll call tool number three, which is now not really a tool as such, but I want you to pay attention to that. Sometimes when you have a triangle like this one here that I have, and I want this to be A, and I want this to be B, and I want this to be C. If the base is simply BC, if this is the base of my triangle of interest, if this is the base, then the height has to be outside of the triangle. It's going to start there and become perpendicular to the direction of the base. It doesn't have to be inside the triangle. The height can be outside of the triangle if you've got a triangle that looks like the one that we have here. Triangle ABC has a base BC. The height has to start from the opposite vertex. If you do that, the height will definitely be outside of that triangle. Right. So when you have those three tools, you have enough. You'll see that proof is going to be quicker now because you understand those three basics that are incorporated in the proof of the theorem. If we don't discuss this with you, you will never see what is going on. We want you to understand those basics, those three things, that I can put the base of a triangle anywhere where I want, and when I've got two parallel lines and I draw two triangles between them, the areas of those two triangles will be the same because parallel lines are equidistant. They have the same height and they have the same base, so keep that in mind. Right, so let's start now with the proof that you asked us for. It's going to take us a really, really, really uh, short time to do this because you already know what we have spoken to you about. Right, that's why it looks complicated to use because you don't really have those basics when you're trying to work with this. So now I've got A, I've got B here, I've got C, and then I was told that I've got a line here, which is line DE, which is apparently parallel to this thing here. So what I simply do here is I come to this side, the... Um, left-hand side of my triangle. You'll see the left-hand side of my triangle by AD. And then I'm going to say, I want this to be the base of my triangle. If I want this to be the base of my triangle, the height, you'll agree with me, has to start at point E and go all the way to be perpendicular to the base of a triangle. And then I will name that H1 as my height. But again, I want the other side BD to be a base of a triangle that I don't have at this present moment. And that triangle that I want is triangle BED, B-E-D. So I need to construct here to form a nice triangle, which is going to triangle B-E-D, so that A-D is the base of a triangle and D-B is also the base of a triangle. And then when I do this, then I'm simply going to say, I want to divide the areas of those two triangles that I created. So I'm going to say, okay, let's get here and say the area, right, of triangle um, ADE, that's the top triangle that we have on top. The very, very bottom triangle that we have when you're looking right at the top there, that's the first triangle that you want us to look at. The one that you're looking at there has got a base of AD, if you look at it, and a height of H1, right? So I want that area divided by the new area of a triangle that I just created, which is triangle BED. Let's call this one triangle B. So the area on top is half multiplied by the base, but I chose my base to be AD. So I'm going to say AD multiplied by the height, which is H1, divided by now triangle bed, the bottom triangle I created, is also half multiplied by its base, which is uh, DB multiplied by the height H1. That height H1 serves both those two triangles. It is inside of the top triangle and it is on the outside of the bottom triangle. Okay, cool. Now, if you look at what we have created so far, you will see that half will cancel half, H1 will cancel H1. You are left now with AD divided by DB, right? This is the ratio that is remaining. And then now we're going to go to the other side of the triangle and say, what if we wanted now this part to be the base of the triangle? If that becomes the base of our triangle, our height, you'll agree with me, has to start at point D. And it's going to travel like that. This is going to be your height. We will call that height H2. Now, when H2 is the height of that triangle with the base of AE, you'll agree with me that if I construct it again from D to C, I'll simply have triangle deck. That triangle deck will share the same height as the top triangle there. Because, again, I want this part to be the base of the other triangle that I have there. So this is basically the secret, making the sides of your triangle to be the basis. Now from there, you will agree with me, we can now construct another ratio and say, 
um, let's take this one again, the area, right, of triangle ADE, the top uh, small triangle divided by the area of triangle DEC, the new triangle we created at the bottom, this one is going to be half the base. What's the base of this triangle? We just decided to say we want the base to now be the, the right-hand side uh, face, the AE side, that one on the right-hand side, the one in yellow, AE. That is basically the base that we have. So my base is going to be AE, so I'll write A and E here, multiplied by the new height, which is H2, divided by half times. The new triangle I created at the bottom has a base of EC, the base of EC, not Eastern Cape, but EC. Please keep that in mind. So EC multiplied by H2. Once more, things will cancel out. Half cancels half. H2 cancels H2. We are left now with AE over EC. Right, now what we're left with is we want to just claim that these ratios are equal that we are looking at. That the first part here must be the same as this second part here. So once we are able to claim this, then we have proven the theorem that you wanted us to prove. So you will notice that the top part of our beginning statement, this part here, this part that you're looking at, ADE, is repeating here. It's the same as this one here. I'm working with the same triangle ADE twice. So if the numerators are the same, my problem is just to claim that the denominator BED is the same as the area of DEC. If I can claim that those are equal, then I'm done proving that those ratios that you have are actually the same as each other. So let's go back at the top and see. If you look at those triangles that I'm talking about, they are here at the bottom, guys. The other one is this one, the green triangle that I just drew here. This triangle here and the other triangle which I'm going to draw in yellow, this one here. They are basically triangles that are drawn between parallel lines. They are lying between two parallel lines since DE is parallel to BC. And we agreed that when you've got two triangles drawn between two parallel lines, then they are going to be equal in area. Then I'm going to conclude and say, but, this is how I'm actually concluding my statement. I'm going to say, but the area of triangle bed is the same as the area of triangle deck. Why are these the same? Is because we have uh, same base. This is your resin. They've got the same base and they've got the same height because they are drawn between parallel uh, sides. Let's have right. Therefore, if that's the case, the numerator is the same, the denominator is the same, then we can conclude that AD divided by DE is the same as AE divided by EC, which is basically the proof that you desired for this theorem. A very powerful question indeed. I hope you saw. The problem is always those tools that you need to incorporate in proving this theorem. I would like to believe that after what you've seen now, you now understand what is going on when it comes to this theorem.